Welcome to Life on the Hulk. Uh, we're up here doing some sanding uh, and to polish up the mold, ready to do the gel coating next weekend. When our kids are coming to join us, it's going to be a family affair. This week's uh, episode is all about putting this lid on. Uh, we put it on maybe once, maybe twice, maybe more. I'm really glad we did it because it's torrential rain outside, so there's no way we'd be doing this if we hadn't got it done. <laughs> Not doing my job right. I forgot to mention that Ross is going to put the big module upstairs in, in the hole that he made last time. Okay, hope you enjoy the episode. Thanks, bye. Okay, time to put the curtain up now, or the actual roof up, but this uh, is going to be a bit of a challenge. I'm going to move those cars back and lay it right out, and I have to insert these long bars into each side of it, and I have to make sure that it goes up the right way. The last time when I built this tent, <laughs> if you remember way back when, I put the roof on upside down, and that created quite a bit of angst between uh, myself and all of my friends. Had to call them all back to help us put that one up, but this one should be a lot easier to put up because firstly it's about a third of the size and secondly it's a little bit better access to be uh, to be pulling it up and over so once I get it up and over I've then got to slit it and start to engage it into these um, ratchet tie downs and that'll hold it down forever but uh, firstly I'm going to get it laid out all nice and neat here on the ground and uh, and then basically put these sleeves in get it all done hopefully I can get it up over today it is very light winds today and that's sort of what I'm hoping for So the whole trick was to get it up to a height where we could then just pull it over and you know probably I could probably manhandle it on my own but I'm not going to do that until after lunch because I just don't want to risk it. There's a little bit too much uh, too much risk in it flying because I've got to then secure it down with the ratchet tied in so I'm going to go and have some lunch and I'll get it finished after lunch. As I did with the last tent, I used some kayak 15 metre throw bags that I had that have got a really high quality polypropylene line on them, which is uh, you know, generally the best way to pull these things over is with three lines. Uh, probably should have more, but uh, given that I can actually stand almost at the height of the actual tent, I thought it would be reasonably easy just to pull the, the tent over with these, uh, with these three ropes, but uh, yeah, the idea is you need three people, and I didn't have them at this stage, so I did one rope at a time and just pulled it up one at a time and, uh, and got it about a quarter of the way over and then realised I was just pushing shit uphill with a broomstick. It just wasn't going to happen, so called in the big guns. It is like as hot as hell and I'm so looking forward to having this roof on because it's going to give me some shelter from the sun. I feel like I've been in a petri dish for the last two weeks. Yeah, she's a bit warm. <laughs> I reckon I could probably do it on my own. I reckon I can uh, get it over a little bit at a time and do it on my own. 
Well, that last one took 10 blokes. The idea is to do this one on my own, but I have got help coming um, soon enough. It's so much easier when you think it through. Boss is here. <laughs> Ready for it? I don't know whether I'm going to be much help. Uh, it's not that hard. It's actually, we're getting the winds actually blowing into it, so it's helping us. So it's actually working to our advantage. Wind's coming this way. Yeah, it's blowing cool. into it, and that's lifting it as it's coming over. Yeah, it's over there. So, Chickie, don't untie the knot. All right. Get on. Yeah, try to pull on the rope. That's it. We'll get it about halfway along and then we'll try off. Okay. Hang on, let me try off my bit and I'll help you. Pull in the heavy way. <laughs> oh, I didn't say that, did I? <laughs> got, got the stronger of the two of us. So. Yeah, I reckon. We're doing alright, we've got it over halfway. I mean, that's better than we did. We had 10 blokes to get it this far with the last one, so. Now even though we had the process pretty well mastered, uh, the cover really does stick to these bars. There's quite a lot of surface here and ideally you want to point it into the wind to let it act as a bit of a sail as it rides up over and the problem was there was so little wind it wasn't really assisting us that much and uh, we had a bit of a few moments where we were just trying to lift it up and over and up and over and ultimately the guy who is uh, in the industrial unit next door, Steve, who's an old friend of ours, actually saw us struggling and came up inside the mould, almost fell into the hatch hole which is a pretty lethal hole in the floor there and, uh, and came over and gave us a hand and then his uh, daughter Lucy's uh, boyfriend Ethan came over and gave us a hand with the final uh, lifting of the tent on so once it was in place I was pretty happy to see that and the temperature dropped around 15 degrees underneath it it was lovely. That was about officially the hardest thing I've ever done. Now I'd like you all to note that it's on the right way up this time, but it's never without a drama. Janet had just left and I had four points tied down and I thought I'm going to go and buy a drink. So I raced down to the service station, the gas station, and uh, I bought a drink, got back and it had blown off, like three quarters of it had blown off. So, And if you read the instructions, it says Make sure you don't leave it untied. Make sure it's totally tethered down. Honestly, it was a poofteenth of wind that blew this thing. <laughs> I was pretty unimpressed, I have to say. But this is the last thing I need to do. It's all secured down. Get it all uh, stitched onto here. I would and, have uh, to say that reading instructions is not Ross's strongest <laughs> point. I'm not good with instructions, am I, honey? No. no. I like to learn by my mistakes, and I make many of those. <laughs> But anyway, but uh, Jan and I, and with the help of Steve, our mate, helped us put it on, and we got it on, and then I do it again. Fun times. Looks good, though, doesn't it? What do you reckon? And see the end down the end there. It's not long enough, so we've got a, a tent that's too short or too long, and not wide enough. <laughs> so this is the compromise that you've got to make when you're boat building. It's, uh, Save money where you can. Looks good though. Yeah, it does look good. It's going to be fine. I've just got to extend this apron out over there and uh, and I'll be good. I'll be Monday morning, I'll be in here repairing and getting ready to make our deck. So uh, much cooler in here now. Oh god, how hot was it here earlier? Mm -hmm. It was 100 degrees in here. It's pretty hot out there. Thank you for that. <laughs>
Oh, very glad that's done, honey. <laughs> yeah, it looks good. So I've got to do the extensions on the side and that's it, I'm ready to start working. If that wasn't already work. Day two of the uh, adventure weekend after a couple of weeks of slaving on the mould and the hulls. Um, I've come down to oh, what I think is one of the most beautiful places in the world. And I'm not going to tell you where it is, but it's not far from where we live. And uh, that's one of the reasons why we moved down here. And Jeff and Dagmar are down for the weekend after a day sailing yesterday. We're going to go sea kayaking. So... The nice thing is now I've got my tent up. I'm not going to be in the sun all week like I have been for the last two weeks and it's been pretty hot. So it's been a pretty brutal couple of weeks on my skin after getting some skin cancers burnt off. So Jen's just packed a dry bag and I've asked her for something. This is usually how we work. <laughs> what a day, eh? Oh. A little bit of a Synergy Paddle Sports ad. A seaward ad. Oh, so relaxing walking into that water. Beautiful. There she is. Wow. Five minutes on the water and we've got dolphins. Yeah, one on his own. He might have another pack behind him. There's one, there's usually more. Yeah, there's penguins chasing them. There's a bit of penguin around here somewhere. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty good. The south coast, mate. And in winter, around about October time out here, you'll get Port Jackson sharks all over this area. So I've done a lot of dive courses out here. What's so amazing is you can see it from above. The area we're paddling here actually boasts the tallest coastline on the East Australian mainland. Uh, 137 metres is that big cliff you can see up there in the distance behind Janet. It's a very wild place. It's pretty much a south facing um, promontory where we paddle out into the open ocean and can look due south towards uh, Antarctica, I guess. What a cracker, eh? Wow, look at this. So this place here, we come here every winter to see humpbacks. Today we've had a seal and a dolphin, so it's been a pretty good day so far. But yeah, beautiful little place this. And it is an area uh, renowned for humpback whales and, uh, and obviously heaps of uh, marine life. We do have quite a large population of penguins, uh, fairy nice. penguins or little penguins we call nice. them, around this area and they're quite often uh, sighted hunting small bait fish in the area. So we absolutely love this area and Janet and I have actually been teaching diving here uh, around 30 years ago yeah, and then mate. had our sea kayaking business around this region for the last 25 years and it's really interesting over the last couple of months since we've sold that business how we're seeing it from a totally different perspective. We're seeing it from a point of view now where we're not guiding people and just going out and enjoying ourselves after many, many years of, uh, of commercial operations, loving every minute of these days out on the water. I think yeah. Janet made this one, didn't you, Dan? Yeah, this was made in the bread maker. Oh, wow. Oh, um, the banana. presentation of the fruit. There you go. So now I've got the module demold that I've got to work out how to get it up in here. Now I'm not going to pull that pallet rack down again. Oh, Jesus, I don't think I could cope with it. Um, what I'm going to do, I'm going to lift that centre beam there and I'll lift that up high enough to make sure that I can get the module through here. In fact, I probably don't even need to lift it up, but I am going to use it to jack strap the uh, actual module up. I'll have one end on a forklift and the other end I'll use on this jack strap system I've got here. It's a 250 kilo jack strap and I should be able to 
pull it up high enough because it has to come in lengthways, it can't come in sideways, it's too wide to fit through that, through that pallet rack. So I'm going to tear that apart now, get that beam up higher and uh, in doing so it'll allow me to get everything organised ready for when the forklift's free up there. It's got a motor hanging off it at the moment and I'm about to get one of the boys to give me a hand, get it up here and get it in the boat. Now, rather than uh, rush this through with a time lapse, I'm going to let you guys endure the uh, the next eight minutes or so while we manhandle this mother in. It's a huge module. It's uh, it's probably not that heavy. It's just incredibly awkward, and uh, we worked out a good way of lifting it in with a jack strap and the, and the forklift. The only issue was it doesn't quite fit in its current configuration as the bulkheads haven't been trimmed down. I neglected to remember that when I put it in. I thought, oh, this is going to be great. I'll just whack it straight in. But uh, I'll let it run because it's interesting to hear the conversations that go on and the amount of profanity. So there is a bit of profane language coming up. And uh, you may want to shut your ears if you've got any young'uns or ladies watching. But, uh, you know, it's just, just what happens when blokes work together like this. They tend to, to just uh, manhandle and, and use the brute force and get the Thing in place and, and ultimately a couple of things get said that probably shouldn't otherwise be on YouTube but anyway here it is for your enjoyment yeah yeah I've got to come in closer you just take a little bit of pressure off now yeah. just make sure it's underneath that thing now yeah, all right Jane lift up want to put a bit of padding on here uh, got any runner up there set I'll probably need one of the up here in a sec. Up. 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 I hope I've got enough height once I get it up here. Hey, Rory, you haven't got enough rope. Just try to avoid what you can hit in the boat. Yeah, it's hitting the steel. Keep going, Jaden. Keep going. Yeah, keep going. Down. Oh, yeah. You need gas and over that? Oh, no, it's got to go here. 
It's right here on the against the wall. Uh, which side is he on this stuff and over? Hang on, man. Does it have to go anywhere? Yes, it does. It won't go anywhere. Slide it to me. Slide it to me. Push up. No, it's easier up here, mate. Oh, yeah, you get down there. It's easier up here. Up, 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 up,
Catherine. Yeah, look at that. So there's a bit of fitting to do there. So that this needs to shift over into and over the top of that bulkhead there. And yeah, it's not level. It's up on a bloody up on an angle. It's because it's sitting up on the on the bulkhead. Thank you.